I've been getting a lot of backhanded compliments lately. That's where you get a compliment and it comes back and slap you in the face. This guy was like, what's your name? I was like, Daphne Springs. He was like, yo, that sounds exotic. I was like, oh, thank you. He was like, yeah, sound like a ghetto bottle of water. <laughs> I was like, yo, get your thirsty self out of here. You can't have none of this Daphne Springs. I don't care if you was on fire. This guy was like, yo, you look like a cute alien. <laughs> it's mostly from the side. Ugh. I was like, alien versus predators? He was like, nah, cuter. <laughs> I was like, what, like E.T.? He was like, yep, phone home, phone home. <laughs> I was going to the grocery store the other day. I walked in, this guy was like, yo, you look like Holly Berry. I was like, he must be blind, but I'll take it. I turned and walked away. He was like, no, nah, you look like Holly Berry when she was on crack <laughs> and losing Isaiah. I was like, ooh, that's an old movie. I was like, yo, take down my number because you're honest and I need honest people in my life. Call me. <laughs> I'm single, hate being single. Cause I don't like going home at night sleeping in the fetal position with a pillow in between my legs and a heated blanket pretending like it's a human. <laughs> I'm out here dating and uh, I love dating older guys cause older guys do stuff for me like they make sure my oil is changed. <laughs> and they take you to the grocery store and make sure you have that food pyramid. You guys remember the food pyramid? They make sure you have your oils, your vegetables, your celery. Ain't never stuff I want, but it's always healthy. But see, the only thing I don't like about older men is I'm afraid that they have old sperm. And I don't want no grown face babies. <laughs> like I don't want any Benjamin Button looking babies. I don't want to make a wish foundation baby. Oh, little sick baby. Forget that baby. <laughs> I nobody want no sick baby. Um, I went to go visit my grandmother recently and she told me my cousin is 14 years old and she doesn't know how to count change. I was like, damn, grandma, she dumb as hell. <laughs> so every time I go over there, I like to reach in my pocket and give her 67 cents and she don't know how to count, so she give me back a dollar. <laughs> and my grandma said, baby, why do you do that? I said, because I'm teaching her government. <laughs> I don't care how dumb you are, you gotta pay your taxes. But I realize these kids nowadays, they're not as smart as us because of the video games they play. They only play video games like Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty. I'm a 90s baby. We played video games that taught us life learned lessons, like Sonic the Hedgehog. You guys remember that? Yeah. yeah. Super Mario Brothers? Yeah. That taught me how to count. I knew that if I got 100 coins, I'd get a new life. <laughs> so every day I'm looking for change. Yeah. Play games like Tetris. That taught me how to organize. I knew that if I put my sofa near my desk, I could clear a line. <laughs> Play games like Street Fighter. Somebody was like, yo, Daphne, after school, I'm gonna beat you up. I was like, I'm ready. <laughs> this is all I had. <laughs> I came in with that Hadouken and nothing happened. So I hurried in with the hurricane kick to the stomach and the hundred hand slap, y'all remember that? <laughs> yeah, won that fight. Um, I'm starting to realize the reason why I am single is because I'm petty and I let small stuff bother me. Um, I was dating this guy, I broke up with him. He was very successful, great guy, great job, just a beautiful person. But he pissed me off because he kept leaving time on the microwave. Yeah, that got up under my skin. I just walk in the house and it'd be 32 seconds and I know it just made my boil, <laughs> my blood boil. And I had enough one day, I used to tell myself in the car, I was like, yo, when you look at the microwave, don't look at it, don't get mad. But my neck would start twitching like this. <laughs> and one day I looked at the microwave and it said three seconds. I was like, who are you? I hate you. I broke up with him. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the one guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the single guy to the left, okay. <laughs> Um, I realize the way you see your family as a child isn't the same way you see your family as an adult, like your whole perspective changes. Like growing up, I always thought my dad was cool, carpe diem, spare the moment. I grew up and realized he was just bad with money. 
I was like, oh, now it makes sense of why we're the only family in this homeless shelter that owns a boat. <laughs> you was making bad decisions. Growing up, I always thought my auntie was cool. She was like that dancing auntie, like she would twerk, battle. I grew up and realized she was a crackhead. <laughs> I was like, now it makes sense of why she was always dancing. She was stealing our stuff. <laughs> and is it me or is like the day black people start doing hardcore drugs is the day our life goes down. Like the best we can come out of that situation is shift manager at McDonald's. But the day white people start doing drugs is the day they can stand before you and say, hi, my name is George W. Bush and I'm the 43rd president of the United States of America. I'm like, that's amazing. He's a real solid dude. I don't know what I'd do without him. Um, give it up for Ebo Brewer. That's me. What up? <laughs> I'm black. I know a lot of people are like, obviously. But there's a lot of people that look like me that don't think they black. I'll give you an example. Um, I was at a barber shop the other day, um, a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was like, hey, bro, can you hand me that magazine? And he's like, brother, I know black, man. I'm Cuban, Cubano. I know black. <laughs> and I'm like, fool, you didn't tell me you weren't black. You just told me where you were black at. <laughs> we pick cotton, you pick sugar cane. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We pick tobacco, you pick sugarcane. Look, I don't know much about what was going on, but I know your ancestors' stay on that island involved some non-compensated labor. And those people didn't get there on a carnival cruise, okay? Let's just bond. Um, I'm also racist. But not in a bad way. I'm not a bigot or anything like that. I just judge people because of the race. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Um, I don't fight Asians. Because <laughs> every other group of people gives you an idea that they may be able to fight. You know, when you run into a black guy, he'll be like big, you know what I'm saying? But doesn't know how to lift weights. Because he got big in prison. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see, like, if you see a white guy, he'll also be big, but he'll have a shirt three sizes too small with a dragon on it and cauliflower ear. That's because he can choke you out. <laughs> and with, with, uh, with Latinos, you know what I'm saying, they'll have a tattoo on their head and or, air or neck area. You know what I'm saying? And um, khaki shorts. Uh, depending on where you're at, it could be a Chargers or Raiders jersey. <laughs> And they stand in a ballet position, you know what I'm saying? Just like... <laughs> what you wanna do, fool? <laughs> I'm right here, fool. We could do this all day, fool. What you wanna do, fool? You might want to get out of there. <laughs> but an Asian will look like an accountant and be, be, be able to hurt you without you even seeing it coming. And they don't, they don't talk like anybody else before a fight. You could be real disrespectful to an Asian. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, no, we can do this, Jackie Chan. <laughs> and he'll be like, I don't think you want this trouble. <laughs> I will allow you the opportunity to move along, sir. <laughs> Violence will inconvenience both of us. <laughs> but you want to persist, you know what I'm saying? Man, 
I don't care about that. I'm from the streets. Let's do this. And all of a sudden, you just hear, hip, hit, hip. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're on the ground. You can't see or hear, and you didn't peed on yourself. <laughs> and he's helping you up. <laughs> now, what have we learned today? Now you in his dojo training. And <laughs> How I do that thing when I make people pee on themselves? <laughs> There's a lot of homeless in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, make some noise. <laughs> now, there's two kind of homeless. You know what I'm saying? There's people in between homes. You know what I'm saying? And there's a career homeless. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just wear a dirt as a uniform. You know what I'm saying? And like, uh, I, saw this, I, saw this, I saw this one homeless dude, it was a trip. Uh, he, was, he was one of the career homeless. Um, he, was, he was on the bus stop. You know, that's like the club for homeless people. <laughs> and he answered his cell phone. He was like, hello? Yeah, I could talk. When can't you talk? <laughs> You're homeless. What's, what's going on in your homeless day to day that you don't have time for a conversation? What are the scenarios? Hello? Man, cans are crazy right now. Let me call you back. <laughs> Hello? Man, my cart is messed up. I gotta take it back to Target. It's got a squeaky wheel. Let me call you back. <laughs> Hello? Man, can't you see I'm on the phone? Every time I get on the phone, you want to, oh, you want to start now? You want to start now? Okay, fine. Hello? Man, I'm having an argument with myself. <laughs> Let me call you back. <laughs> Who is calling homeless people? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I do a lot of, I do a lot of uh, eating. <laughs> and uh, I started working out. And I noticed something about working out. You can't say you work out until somebody tells you you work out. That's how working out works. If you say you work out before people tell you you work out, you're going to get your feelings hurt. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, I work out. Ha <laughs> ha, what? Work out a plan to eat? You work out, what do you look at? You look at a gym. You watch people work out. It's just like, because the other day, you know, somebody said to me, like, hey man, you've been working out? I'm like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. a couple of years ago, and the lady said to me, she said, uh, you didn't sound black over the phone. <laughs> I said, then I might be in the wrong place because uh, you didn't either. <laughs> with my voice. I went on a blind date with a dude and he was like, oh, you're so articulate. You speak so well. I said, you heard me in the trunk. <laughs> with the duct tape over my mouth. I said, what did I say? <laughs> I'm from Detroit, everybody. <laughs> Feel the love. If you don't know, Detroit has just recently gone through a bankruptcy because we're broke. <laughs> Newsflash, people. <laughs> Me and everybody in the city of Detroit is broke. How come we couldn't get in on the bankruptcy too, okay? <laughs> 
I mean, really, you threw so much stuff into the bankruptcy. Did you ever think about adding Experian, Equifax, maybe TRW? I need to get my credit straight, too, okay? <laughs> I mean, and how dare Detroit even say it's the car capital of the world anymore? People, it's like two cars left, okay? That's because everybody who bought a car drove it out of Detroit. The people that own the two cars, they flew, okay? We got so many abandoned houses and empty buildings in Detroit. Oh my God. I mean, the busiest part of the city is where my brother lives and that's because he's in jail. <laughs> I went up in there, it was paparazzi and everything. His cellmate was the ex-mayor of Detroit. <laughs> Ladies, you need a boyfriend? I know where to go. <laughs> and you know, Detroit is broke. I mean, really, we can't even afford to dot the I or cross the T when we spell Detroit, okay? <laughs> 99 cent stores have renamed themselves. We'll take whatever you got stores. <laughs> You know it's bad when drug dealers want to go to pharmacy school, okay? <laughs> but Detroit was good when I grew up. It really was. I mean, there were people everywhere, like hookers and, and winos and crazy people and crackheads and junkies and derelicts and meth users and uh, degenerates. And that was just in my house, okay? <laughs> You know, I had a good childhood though, I did. My parents were good to me, they were married to each other. Seven kids, we all went to Catholic school. And even though my father was an alcoholic, let me put it to you this way, had he been a cop, people, we could have been Irish, okay? <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like to give their kids sugar anymore because they say it's bad for them. Well, okay, it is, but uh, sugar and Kool-Aid was a prerequisite staple when I grew up, okay? <laughs> it was a food group. I mean, grape was in the afternoon, orange was in the morning, and what color was at night? Red. <laughs> you know why? That's because Kool-Aid got you out of the house and it kept you out of the house, okay? I'd be on such a sugar rush, people. I knew all my neighbors in a 360 degree radius. I knew so many neighbors, I even knew where the pedophiles lived because uh, they offered me Kool-Aid, okay? <laughs> I, uh, I like to read, but I'm not gonna read that book, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, because it's all about kinky sex and bondage. Number one, if it's about getting beat up, let me tell you, if it's about getting beat up, how come it isn't called Fifty Shades of Being Black and Blue? And personally, I don't need a man to pull my hair and to spank me with a paddle because uh, I went to Catholic school. <laughs> yeah, the same author though. The author is really prolific because she wrote a book called uh, Fifty Shades Darker. You know I'm reading that. Because <laughs> if it's even a fictional person, Fifty Shades Darker than me, Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh my God, I read that uh, Janet Jackson uh, married a billionaire and converted to Islam. Right, which, you know, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. Because people, if a billionaire wants to marry me, I don't think I'm gonna need religion, okay? <laughs> I mean, really, if I'm gonna convert to anything, it'll be from a uh, Ford to a Bentley, okay? <laughs> I might go from counting the metric system to real dollars, you know? And the last place I'm gonna drive will be in Detroit, all right? <laughs> really, because Detroit's so bad, I'm thinking of moving to Cleveland, all right? <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> Being a Catholic, I was a little upset when the Pope gave up the papacy. You know, I was upset because he said he was tired. The Pope was tired. Excuse me, Pope. You got a job for life in the middle of a recession where other people can't get a job. <laughs> but you're gonna quit. <laughs> 
okay. <laughs> I was tired of old white guys being the Pope, okay? Pope John, Pope Paul, Pope John Paul, Ringo George, give me a break. I'm thinking we got a Barack Obama. How about a little Snoop Popey Pope? <laughs> right? And how come nobody ever even considered to have a woman be a pope? I mean, it would have been great, because women, we wouldn't have had anything to do with your kids. Why? We all know women don't like other women's kids. <laughs> my, uh, my ex-husband's from Detroit, you guys, he really is. But we broke up because we didn't have anything in common, okay? He was Catholic, I was Catholic. He hated his mama, I hated his mama too. <laughs> but for real, I am the only black woman I know who married a white man with worse credit than her, right? <laughs> You guys have been great, enjoy yourself. I'm Ina Romeo. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I'm from New York City, everybody. Uh, we, we all know that New York City is the melting pot, right? Uh, my family melted here from Haiti. <laughs> I'm very proud to be Haitian, I'm very proud to be Haitian. The only thing I don't like is when I tell folks that I'm Haitian, I get a weird reaction, because I guess I don't look Haitian to most people. Like, I, sometimes I feel when I tell folks, they don't even care. Like, sometimes white people, they can make me feel really uncomfortable, because they have like this stare, like in the back of the in their minds, they're saying, oh my God, I didn't know they made other versions of you people. <laughs> It's crazy. A lot of times I get, you don't look Haitian enough. And I'm like, what is that supposed to mean, you don't look Haitian enough? Like, am I supposed to land some rubble for a few days and then come back out like, ah, here I am? Do I qualify now? Is there enough third world struggle on my face? The worst response I ever got, I was talking to this girl, you know, making a small talk, asking each other, oh, where are your folks from, you know? And I'm like, well, my family's actually from Haiti. She was like, damn, you Haitian? Like, why Clef earthquake Haitian? I'm like, whoa, what is that supposed to mean? So you're just gonna associate me with tragedy off the jump. That's how we're gonna start this conversation? She started apologizing, because she knew she was in the wrong. She was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean the earthquake comment. I'm like, no, why you gotta compare me to Wyclef? He is ugly as hell. I can't get a better looking Haitian, you can't upgrade me, I can't get a Lenny Gravitation, what's up? <laughs> Everybody's like, oh my God, I had no idea Lenny Gravitz was Haitian. <laughs> and here's the thing, people, here's the thing. He's not Haitian, but if he was, that'd be a good example to have. It's way better than white club Haitian any day of the week, people. I'm a little vain, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have aspirations. Besides sexy, I wanna be like GQ sexy. You know what GQ sexy is? GQ sexy is when you get to take pictures with your eyes closed, looking down at your chest like this. Just, <laughs> just have that freedom, that confidence. You can't do that when you're ugly. When you're ugly, all your faces are like this in the photos. This is the only face you can make right here. It's like, didn't we tell you not to smile? I'm not smiling. Just, I didn't do nothing. Uh, guys, even though I look adorable, uh, I'm broke as hell. Uh, I took, a, took the train to come here. <laughs> I love the trains out here, man. The trains in California, you guys, have clean, efficient, powerful trains, great trains. Compared to the ones in New York, I hate the trains in New York. Everybody's always like, oh my God, I love New York because you can take the train. Here's the only thing. New York just has trains that run more frequent, and there's just a bunch of them. But it doesn't mean that it's better, okay? I live in New York City, and it takes me three hours to get home. Does that sound fair? There's people who live in other states that get home before I do. That's a terrible way to live, people. The train is always breaking.
right, happy to be here in Southern California where it's always warm, man. I was staying at my buddy's house in Compton today, it was 86 degrees, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm not used to that, you know what I'm saying? I was sitting outside smoking a blunt, it lit itself, it was ridiculous, man. I was like, man, the Lakers suck this year, I don't know what they doing. It. Oh, we gotta smoke this, here we go. Pup, pup, pass, Jesus lit this, we gotta keep it going. Too damn hot out here, man. My buddy's like, you know what? When it gets hot, you just gotta put some baby powder under your arms. I'm like, all right. Around noon, I had a loaf of bread baking under my arm. <laughs> Biscuits hanging from my balls. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Weather gets nice. People like to get outdoors. If you like to go camping, make some noise. You like to camp? Yeah, screw camping. I don't like camping. That's not my thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a cultural thing, man. I got a lot of white friends always ask me about that stuff. They're like, hey, hey, what's going on, man? What's going on? Showtime, Mr. Funny Man. Hey, check it out, bro. We're gonna be camping this weekend, man. Just catching fish to eat, sleeping on the rocks, man. Just drinking all weekend. Just roughing it, bro. You down to roll? Hell no. <laughs> the boy's like, why not, dude? Because I got a place to live, okay? <laughs> I spend $850 every month, so I don't have to live outside, all right? And that's how nice it is to be white in America. Y'all get to pretend to be homeless for three days just to change things up, just for recreation. White people love to rough it. Don't ask black people to rough it. It's rough enough just being black, trust me. If I want to rough it, I'll peel the registration sticker off my license plate and drive past the police station a few times. If you love having sex, making love, and doing the nasty one, he y'all make some noise. If you still practice safe sex, make some noise. Well, I hope all your test results come back negative. <laughs> For those of you without a free hand to clap with, I hope that's just a rash and cream clears that stuff up. You know? <laughs> it is 2015, I don't wanna see any of you beautiful people get hurt trying to have a good time. Please wrap it up, wear a condom, that's my PSA for the day, okay? Now, I am not a role model by any stretch of the imagination, but I wear condoms all the time. In fact, I wear condoms before I go to sleep because I don't trust the holes in my dreams, I really don't. <laughs> That's how you get bed bugs, you know? <laughs> Sometimes we're condoms for a jerk off. I don't know whose hands I've been shaking. <laughs> that sanitizer don't get everything and it stings a little bit. Anyway. That's the laugh of people that know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Reach for the lotion, it wasn't lotion. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's clean. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, man, you got to wear condoms. They got condoms for absolutely everything. I was walking through a Walgreens the other day. I saw a condom I had no idea existed. The U.S. Army makes condoms now. Yeah, the box is camouflaged. It's right there in the box. They'll never see you coming. I was like, what? I'll take three of these. That is some brilliant marketing right there. I'm supporting the troops. I'm about to be all I can be. I remember I bought myself a box of glow-in-the-dark condoms one time, just as a gag, never thought I'd actually get a chance to use them, but I did. And as you probably tell by now, y'all, I'm not the most mature person on the planet, okay? <laughs> so I put on this glow-in-the-dark condom, I look down, and now my penis is a lightsaber, right? <laughs> Girl I'm with is trying to be serious and sexy, but little does she know she's about to play a part in my favorite Star Wars fantasy. <laughs> she's laying on the bed trying to be all sexy and stuff. She's like, hmm, you ready to come get this, baby? I'm like, you're about to feel the power of the dark side. <laughs> Your master has taught you well. reaction too. Uh, but then she got into it. She's like, pow, the dog said, what the hell are you doing? Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Help me, Obi-Wan. You my only hope. Yes. Who the force is strong with you, baby? That's what I'm talking about. Beat me up to Scotty. Wrong one, trick. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh my God. Oh, Corey. Right there. I'm gonna... And that was the night I found the G-spot, Pasadena. 
When your girl turns into Chewbacca on your mattress, you have found it. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure that's what G-Spot stands for. We're saying for <laughs> Oh my goodness. Sex is a wonderful thing, man. I love all kinds of sex. Love oral sex mainly. It's a wonderful thing. You gotta be careful though, because I had a tragic muff diving accident a few weeks ago. Uh, and I made the mistake of not protecting myself at all times, you know what I'm saying? And fellas, like, you gotta be careful when you're going down on a girl, because if you do it too well, you can hurt yourself. And I'm like, because if you're doing a girl, like, handling business, she'll turn to another person in your bedroom. And this chick turned to a UFC fighter on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was down there handling business, just yelling to go, hee hoo. <laughs> she started to orgasm. Next thing I know, she locked that leg around the back of my neck. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm in a triangle choke, like, what the hell? <laughs> This girl is Anderson Silva, help! I'm all like, I tap, I tap, I give up, I give up. She can't hear me because she's like I wake up 15 minutes later, she's holding my legs in the air so the blood goes back to my brain. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I wake up like tried to drown me. <laughs> That's my time, y'all. I'm Corey Robinson. Have a good one. Thank you. Um, tell y'all right quick, my real name is not Boogie. Um, y'all explain it sometimes. I, always, I used to rap when I was younger. I used to want to be a rapper, so that was my given rap name. So, you know, I don't know how much y'all know about rap, but in rap, you cannot use your real name. It don't sound right being introduced. That's why. Because, like, like, just imagine if you was at a rap concert, you just saw 50 Cent and Snoop. And then right after that, they introduced a guy like this. Ladies and gentlemen, you just seen 50 Cent. You just seen Snoop Doggy Dog. But now, put your hands together and give it up for Jacob Weingartner. He'll be like, when is Jacob about to do my taxes? What is that? I thought this was a rap concert. Give it up for Melvin Jenkins. Clap for him. you like, Melvin? Is he about to shine some shoes at the show? What is going on? You can't use your real name is my point. So, but, that, but now I'm, I'm older now. I'm over 30. So, you know, rap is out of the window. It's out, it's out the question. That's a young man's game. Like, you can't rap. Why? Because it's unacceptable to women that you rap at 33 and they never heard of you. You can't tell no woman at the bar that you rap for a living. At the bar? You rap for a living? You don't got a CD out or demo or nothing? That's, you're not a rapper. She, she's not going to believe it. She don't want to hear it. Fellas, if you rap for a living, don't say that. Say that you sell prepaid legal or something more believable that you make an income off of. It's better. That, you white dudes too, white guys, if you still hanging on to your rock and roll dreams and you 49, <laughs> turn your garage back into a garage. You're not, you're, get your band out of there. You're, you're not going to make it. Cut your ponytail. Put a whole shirt on. You're not going to make it. You're 49. You got, you got a corporate job, but on the weekends, you rock out. No, it's not going to work. It's not going to work for you. It's not going to work. I'm from New Orleans, like she said. Um, uh, yeah, appreciate it. Um, let me tell y'all this right now. Um, just because I'm from New Orleans don't mean that after the show, you need to come up to me and try to relate something to New Orleans. <laughs> if you don't have nothing about New Orleans to say, don't make nothing up. There's no reason. I did a show last week. A dude came up to me after the show, and he was like, you from New Orleans for real? I was like, yeah. He was like, man, that's crazy. I was like, why? He was like, because my grandmother named Katrina. <laughs> like, what? Not even from New Orleans. <laughs> that got to do with anything. 
all the women that I meet in Los Angeles seem to think that because I'm from New Orleans, I like all my food cooked spicy. Everything ain't supposed to be spicy. Let me tell you this right now. I was dating a chick. Everything she cooked, she said it was Cajun. Everything. I was like, babe, why did you make spicy broccoli? I don't like spicy broccoli. Why is this hot? Why is this hot? She was like, it's Cajun. I was like, no, it's not. She was waking me up at 9 o'clock in the morning fixing me spicy waffles. I don't eat spicy waffles. Why is this? It's too, too early in the morning for this type of seasoning. You know what I'm saying? You know, mess my whole week up. She was like, but it's Cajun. I was like, oh my God, there ain't no Cajun oatmeal. Where do you get this from? What cookbook is this? You, this is disgusting. I don't know. Women, I, I'm going to tell y'all right now in L.A., I know ladies got great jobs in L.A. Don't try to brag about your job when you first meet me. I don't, I don't, don't, don't glorify your job. Don't, don't, don't do that to us. Because you put us in a position where we need to lie. I, I don't want to lie to you right away, but you, you're forcing me to. You're forcing me to. I met a girl at the club. I was at the Cabana Club in Hollywood. I said, babe, you look good. You look like you're doing your thing. What you do for a living? She was like, <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. I was like, what is it? She was like, I'm a social worker for the FBI. I make 80000 this year, probably 87 next year. So what you do? Ah, I'm thinking to myself, should I tell this woman that I work at Denny's? <laughs> Probably not. I just changed the subject, fellas. You gotta learn how to change the subject and flip it back on them. I was like, you know what? I'm a shepherd for the Lord, trying to see what your relationship with the man upstairs is. Because that's, that's the only kind of women I deal with, is the ones who got a relationship up, up high. She switched it right back. She was like, oh, I, I do, I do, but um, I'm looking for a man with a relationship with some employment. Do you have that? I was like, ah, you got me. You back on it, got me. Can't do it. You can't argue with a woman when she have a better job than you in a relationship. You cannot argue. You should not. Why? Because she's going to be the winner of the argument at the end of the argument. You don't want to mess your week up arguing about what year Jordan left the Bulls. Who cares? Let her win. Just, yeah, just let her win. You'll mess your whole week up trying to be right in your relationship. Don't do it. This is how I found that out. I was watching football with my girl. I was like, you know what? This game is terrible. I'm going to stop watching. We was watching the Eagles. My, my girl says, babe, I think the Eagles going to go all the way. I think Vic going to take them to the Super Bowl. I was like, babe, um... Stop you. Uh, the man just said that the Eagles are three and seven. That means they only won three games. So they're probably not going to make it to the Super Bowl. She changed the whole argument about me. <laughs> this is what she said. She looked at it again. Oh. Well, I know somebody's going to take this damn trash out, though. I know that. I'm like, what? <laughs> trash? What that got to do with the game? She was like, matter of fact, don't you have to be at Denny's from three to seven? You don't worry about what Vic about to do. You get your life together. I was like, wow, harsh. I should have just let her just say it. I should have let her say it. I should have let her say it. You can't win certain arguments. Um, I got a son, a little son right now. He's 11. Uh, I almost had to uh, give him his first spanking the other day. Uh, because he got caught cheating in school. Um, but I wasn't gonna whip him for that because I cheated in school. So I was gonna be, I'm not a hypocrite. I cheated in school, but I just feel like 11 is too young for you to be cheating in school. Like, it's not that, I didn't start cheating until I was at least in 10th or 11th when they put the pressure on me. That's when I started, I started trying to, you know, better to cheat than repeat. That's when that hit me. That, that phrase didn't hit me until like 11th, you know. So I, I wanted to hear my son out. I was like, son, what happened? The, late, the teacher called today and said you was cheating in school. I want to know what happened. Just tell me what happened. How did you get caught cheating? He said, well, dad, I was um, copying off of the little Asian guy I sit next to. I was like, so far, so good. <laughs> You're on the right track. He was like, for number 12, he put, I don't know, on the paper. So for number 12, I put, me neither. Go get the belt. Go get the belt. That is just terrible. 
You don't even know how to cheat. Go get the belt. Um, real quick, I'm gonna say this and I'm gone. Um, ladies, you gotta start lowering your standards. <laughs> Not just ladies, because guys, you have to also start lowering your standards. So whatever level you on, find somebody who's on that same level in life. Don't try to get something that you're not qualified for. That's what I'm saying. I was talking to my boy at the club. He was like, ah, I mess with dimes and up. That's why I'm single. I only mess with dimes. She has to be doing her thing. Good job. Take care of her kids. Her house has to be nice. She has to have a house. I was like, wow. I was like, um, brother, don't you cut grass for a living? <laughs> he was like, yeah. I was like, well, you don't need no dime. You need a chick who rake leaves for a living. <laughs> right on your level in life. I'm Comedian Boogie B. Thank you for your time. <laughs>